Hey, hey, Girl Scouts. My name is Marissa and I work for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. I am the program and partnerships team leader uh, for the council and I work out of the Cincinnati office. So we actually have four offices. So I work in the southernmost office. And today I am going to be here uh, to help you work on your junior drawing badge. Um, so before we get started, I do want to just point out on the map where we are. And I didn't have a, an official map, but I went ahead and printed one out. So uh, you can see I highlighted Ohio here. Um, and so I am located um, in the southwest region, so down this way. Um, so as I mentioned today, we are going to be working on the junior drawing badge. And the goal of this badge uh, is to help you open up your mind whenever you use uh, a blank piece of paper and learning how to experiment with uh, different mediums, which are tools that we use when we draw uh, and create. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, what you all come up with and help you open up your imagination as we uh, dive into the badge. So welcome, welcome if you're tuning in from the US, if you're tuning in from outside the US, we're, we're so happy that you're joining us and I'm excited to be here uh, with you all. So with the junior drawing badge, we are going to be working on step one, which is experimenting with different materials. So uh, there's three different choices for this. Uh, I'm going to choose the one that sounds the most fun for me, but I encourage you to do the one that sounds the most fun for you. So uh, the three options are to try using black and white, using different uh, mediums or tools, uh, to use color, or the choice that I'm going to do is going to be to mix and match. So use three different types of mediums and see how they kind of play off each other and create different effects. Um, so with that in mind, you will need three different types of utensils. So for black and white, uh, you can draw one still life, which is um, a, a picture of an inanimate object, uh, which is what we're going to be working on today. So you can use that doing uh, a black pen, a black colored pencil, charcoal, a regular pencil, a crayon, whatever you've got around. Um, you have the option to do something in color. So you could do oil pastels, chalk, colored pencils, colored markers, colored pens, whatever you've got. And then for mix and match. So uh, I'm just going to use what I've got around the house today. So I'm going to be using um, colored pencils. So I've got this awesome box um, of super color uh, soft colored pencils. There's 120 different colors. I will say I probably got this when I was about your age. Uh, so I've definitely lost some colors over the years. Then I'm going to be using my favorite medium when it comes to drawing. I've been drawing for a really long time uh, and I'm going to be using micro pens. So this is an example of a micro pen. Uh, what's really fun about these guys is they're, they're black drawing pens and they vary in size. So if you ever go to a craft store and you're interested in using these, always look um, on the caps. You can see this as a one. Um, a one is a thicker tip. So you can see that kind of looks like a fine tip marker. Um, and then there are other ones that I really enjoy because you can get a lot of small details. So for example, um, a 0 0.05, so you see that, and I open up and the tip is a lot thinner. Uh, so you can get a lot of really tight, unique detail uh, if you like doing stuff with that. Um, this activity can vary uh, 30 to 60 minutes depending on how uh, how much you get into it, depending on what you choose to draw. You'll need a desk, you'll need different types of mediums or tools to draw with, and I forgot to mention this, but most importantly, you'll need paper. So uh, it doesn't matter what kind of paper you use. Uh, again, I'm just using what I have around the house, so I had a bunch of extra sketching paper, so this is what I'm using. Uh, it's a fine drawing paper. It's not really textured, so it's smooth. Um, and again, this is just what I have around the house, so I'm gonna uh, make use of that. But feel free, you can use printer paper, notebook paper, or if you've even got something more creative, uh, I, I encourage you to use that. Uh, but before we start, it's, it's always important to figure out what it is that you want to draw. Um, I'm gonna go with something that uh, was just sitting on my desk today. So I'm gonna draw this snake plant. I figured it would be um, fairly simple, but I could make it, you know, it could take more time if I wanted to, depending on how much detail I want to get into with these fronds. Um, I thought this could be a really fun thing if you are using, you know, colored pencils and you want to get in there and do a lot of detail. Uh, could be something fun to play around with. So we're going to kick this off with micro pens and I am going to, this is going to start off as a contour drawing. And then uh, for the last part of the step, I will add some color. So um, again, Maybe burn your candle, play some music if you're doing a micro pen. And I encourage you uh, just to move quickly. And, and the nice thing about pen uh, is that it's pretty forgiving. So if you make mistakes, 
uh, you can thicken the line and I promise you no one <laughs> will notice your mistake. That's one of my favorite reasons why uh, I use micro pens often is because um, if I draw fast I typically do make some you know mistakes or I don't get a proportion right and the medium is just really forgiving. So that's why I tend to use these quite often. So I've got a basic line drawing down. I actually want to capture part of the curve of this desk just to give us some proportion here sitting on the edge of my desk. And if I wanted to, I could even kind of plug in the background. I've got my windowsill behind it. So that could even be kind of, I might just throw that in for fun. So that's something you can think about too, is not just capturing your object, but you know, what's sitting behind your object. Here I've got this windowsill. So I'm gonna um, just play around with that a little bit. And again, I, I'm not for the sake of time doing proportions, but uh, I definitely encourage you if that's something of interest to play around with that, be a lot of fun take up a lot of time too and we all know we have all of time these days to play around with proportion. I've captured my plant. I do kind of like how that looks but as you can see it's not perfect. I, I definitely um, you know it's not it's not perfect and that's okay and that's why I love using pen. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a thicker pen and I'm going to contour it up. So I'm going to do a contour drawing. A contour drawing is typically just uh, a line drawing that has different thicknesses um, of the line to show depth. So that's something I'm going to play around with. I'm going to show you that really quick and then um, I'll show you what can happen when we add in some color to the line drawings. Uh, so this is a soft brush pen. It's kind of fun because it's like painting and drawing in one. Really great if you want to get into calligraphy or experimenting with uh, line drawings. Um, one of the many reasons I love working with pen is it's forgiving, it's really smooth. So I'm gonna bounce between different pens just based on what feels right for me. Um, so I encourage you kind of, if you have accessibility to pens, and I actually switched here to um, just a really thick, it's kind of almost like a thick Sharpie. Um, as you can see, I'm really thickening up some of these lines to Hide some mistakes, if you will, if you want to call them that. I don't really like the word mistake, but I don't really believe in mistakes in drawing, especially when one is drawing with pen. But these are just fun. It's fun to vary your line thickness and, and see what can come of that. I really love getting into different depths. It's such an easy way to make your picture uh, just kind of come to life here. I mean, it's really fun too um, when you're drawing things with curves. You can accentuate the curve uh, when you're drawing with pen. So I always love to kind of make curves a little bit thicker and it makes it a little bit more dramatic. Again, it's fast. It's not perfect, but it's just such a fun way to um, bring life into your drawing. And two, I, I'm gonna leave the background thinner because I want my plant to pop. That's really what I want to be um, my focus area. And honestly, if you don't even have access to micro pens, Sharpies, I always keep a Sharpie at my desk too. Um, Sharpies are a great tool to use. So I'll show you, I'll switch here and use some Sharpie and. You can see it works just fine. It works pretty much the same. So you can uh, use Sharpie at home for a medium if, if that kind of floats your boat, if you're interested in experimenting with that. But yeah, it's fun to try and make different lines, connect and, and make new shapes. At this point, I'm really not even looking at um, my plant anymore. I'm really just kind of playing around with what I've got on the page. But again, if you wanna use this time to try and make your drawing more accurate, by all means, um, play around with that. Look back and see what proportions are off. How can you adjust things? Uh, this is that great time to try and shore that up. Looks quite different now, huh? I went in and I thickened it up. Uh, really fun. I love how bold that looks. You can tell it's a plant from far away. It's not perfect, but it's got some energy to it, you know? So again, we're doing step one of the drawing badge, junior drawing badge, fourth and fifth grade girls. Uh, and so this is how I'm gonna close out uh, the third 
choice to our step. So I don't know that I'm gonna color the whole thing again for the sake of time, but um, I am gonna try to get some color in there and you can use as much color or as little color as you want. Maybe you just wanna do a highlight. That could even be cool. Um, really play around with it. You could color it in like it's a coloring picture or maybe as I said, you just wanna add some color to the outlines to really um, bring it to life. I kind of like how that sounds. Um, but again, I'm gonna experiment. Um, I might make more than one of these when I'm done with this video because I'm having a really fun time. It's been a while since I've played with colored pencils. I, I whipped them out the other day uh, to write some letters to some uh, friends and family and uh, I just forgot how much I enjoy them. It's just it's such a fun uh, medium to play with. And I do really like how this is looking. Uh, getting some really fun highlights. Uh, with this colored pencil. Oh, and Kitty came to say hi. Don't step on the laptop. <laughs> yeah, this is coming out really cool. I'm curious if everyone else is kind of just playing around with highlights or if you're uh, coloring in the whole thing, but I will hold this up uh, just so you can get a glimpse. And I might go in and fill in just a little bit more to show you how you can play around. So um, I've gone into my line drawing it's showing up a little bit more yellow than green on the computer, but I promise you it's more of a green. And so I'm kind of just going in and, and adding some highlights and I like how that's coming along. I do still love uh, the textures that are coming out on um, the leaves. So I'm gonna try to just capture a little bit of that. I'm going really fast here. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just trying to capture some texture. It's just something I really love about the snake plant. I love the different colors that pop out. It's so unique. So hopefully everyone can see that. I'm kind of just chugging along. This one's got definitely a little bit darker in the background. And again, I'm kind of just glancing back at the plant every now and then and just trying to notice where I see big blocks of pattern um, versus, you know, where it's uh, more solid in color. And again, it, do it doesn't need to be perfect because, you know, the snake plant, uh, has a lot of really interesting details and the only one who's going to know what it really looks like is you <laughs> at the end of the day. So uh, play, have fun. It's the best part with drawing is just to have fun. Um, again, I kind of just have gone through and added some texture and I really love how that's kind of looking with the black. It's definitely kind of funky. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can kind of combine real life uh, with your imagination. So this is a great example. So I've kind of got that real life imagery of the plants and some of the texture. Uh, but I want to make my pot really funky. I don't necessarily want that to look like real life. So this is where um, the freedom comes in and, and doodle. And I, I love doodling. So I'm going to make this flower pot look like whatever I want it to. And you can do this with whatever you're drawing too. Um, maybe you want to start a separate drawing. Maybe you like how yours looks more realistic and you don't want to kind of taint that. So, um, and again, I'm not really going with any rhyme or reason. I'm kind of just picking up colors that I'm gravitating towards. I thought the purple would look kind of nice against the green. Um, but again, do whatever it is that you want to do. But this is where I love to play. I love playing with textures and patterns and trying to brighten things up. That's why it's fun to kind of combine, you know, black and white with color is it just gives it such a unique uh, look that you don't necessarily find other places. Um, and I might even, you know, pink could be kind of fun to throw in here. So combine what you see with what's in your head people can get a little taste of what it's like to be in your head. I'm sure it's a unique spot. Just to show that there's some dirt there. And I I'm really just going to try to make that look textured. So I'm going to show you all my finished product. For now. Finished for now. Or it's never truly finished. Um, so this is my drawing. As you can see, I, I had decorated my pot. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Added some dirt here. And I love I love the fronds. The fronds were really fun for me to draw. Um, so again, this is my drawing. 
this is what I was drawing. <laughs> so you can definitely see some similarities there. It's not perfect. Um, and so there we go. We finished step one. I'm curious what you liked in your drawing, if there's anything you might want to try differently next time. If there's more you'd want to learn about, if you're really intrigued with maybe the micro pen or colored pencil and you want to try experimenting with that. So um, again, today we experimented with different mediums to see how we can create on paper. So we used micro pen, colored pencils, uh, and we even combined them for the last bit. Um, I, again, I'm curious to know what, what you learned from this, what surprised you. I'll be honest, I before this video, I never actually combined um, these two mediums before. I usually work with the micro pen and uh, watercolor, and that's how I kind of play around with color in black and white. Uh, so I really love how this turned out. As I mentioned, I haven't played around with colored pencils in a while, and this was really enjoyable for me. So I encourage you to check out other activities for Girl Scouts at home if this is something that you enjoyed. Uh, you can visit the Girl Scout shop at girlscouts.org for more ideas or reach out to your local Girl Scout council and troop leader. So again, thank you for hanging out with me. Again, my name is Marissa and I'm from Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. And uh, I hope you enjoyed trying the activity and hopefully I will see you around soon.